In the summer of 2013, I had just run a tempo workout around the 2.2 kilometer cross loop on top of Mount Royal. This workout was a staple at the time, and this was just another tempo run that I think was successful since I would have remembered if it wasn't. On my run down the mountain to go back home, all of a sudden I started to have a sharp pain in the top of my left foot with every foot strike. At first I thought maybe my shoe had a rock wedged inside on top of my foot because the main road on Mount Royal is gravel. I took off my shoe, but there was nothing there. I walked home and the next day I felt the pain even walking and I couldn't run. It was such a sudden onset that I thought maybe I had a stress fracture. I went to the physio right away and he diagnosed me with Martin's neuroma. The physio also warned me that it's critical that I let it heal and not run through pain because it could become chronic. Of course, I searched Dr. Google when I got home and treatments listed online were mostly surgery, which I absolutely didn't want because it would ruin my season. It took me about a month to get back up to full volume and I was diligent about stopping my run at the onset of pain. When I read that the author of today's book ran through his Morton's neuroma, I couldn't believe he had made it to the start of his marathon. So hi, and welcome to the Running Book Reviews podcast, where we review running books to help you decide if you would like to read the book for yourself. We also hope that listening to us chat about running can help keep you motivated about your own running or maybe inspire you to try something new. My name is Liz, and with my co-host, Alan, we're going to talk with author Paul Tonkinson about his book, 26.2 Miles to Happiness, a comedian's tale of running, red wine, and redemption. So 26.2 Miles to Happiness is Paul Tonkinson's memoir, an account of his sub-three-hour marathon attempt, kind of mixed in all at the same time. Paul lost his mother when he was very young and had a rocky relationship with his stepmom between the ages of six and 13. He explains some of the scars that this relationship left him with well into adulthood. He also explained it how running helped him overcome these. As a young boy, he would wake up before anyone else in the household and sneak off for a run in an old pair of boots. As an adult, Paul spent some time enjoying food and alcohol, probably a little too much, before getting back into running for health reasons. Paul's work as a comedian means that he has some very good friends that are not really runners. And this makes for some funny stories as he's trying to get ready to run his sub three hour marathon. There's one instance, for example, where he's in a restaurant with a friend, tries to order a healthy option with no alcohol. And I think his friend thinks he's lost his mind or he's suddenly become poor because he offers to pay for his meal because he thinks Paul's got no money. Why on earth would you, would you eat like that or drink like that? So let me tell you a little bit about, about Paul. Paul Tonkinson is a British comedian radio presenter and television personality, best known for his presenting work on The Big Breakfast and The Sunday Show. If you're a Brit, you'll know all about this, but if you're in North America, probably not so much. He was a winner of the 1992 Time Out New Act of the Year Award and was Time Out Stand-Up Comic of the Year in 1997. Paul has returned to running as an adult and is now in the sub three-hour marathon club with a PB of 259.21 at the London Marathon. Along the way, he's also started a podcast called Running Commentary, where he and his comedy colleague in crime and running, Rob Deering, interview people while running or just talk about running while running. The author hopes that his book can convince at least one person to run a marathon. So maybe we'll check in with whether that's happened. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you very much for having me. So it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here to talk about running, talk about the book. I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, great. First question for you, um, as usual, what prompted you to write this book? Yeah, it's weird. Everyone, everyone always says that uh, that you've got a book in you, haven't you? It's a kind of quote that people say. Every, everyone's got a book in them, and um, and I'd wanted to write a book, and it just took me a long time to find the book that was in me. Um, and at forty-seven, I did. It was also it was also a book that someone was willing to commission as well. Uh, I. Um, yeah, I, 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 I loved running. I was passionate about running when I was a kid. I'd returned to it in midlife. I felt myself getting a little bit faster. I felt old competitive juices returning. Um, and I was becoming fascinated by the, uh, the the struggle of beating three hours for the marathon. And along the way, while I was training for it, I had the idea for writing a book about it. And in my mind, while I was preparing for the marathon the writing of the book and the 
beating sub three became became joint became one. I mean, you, you've sort of there's no uh, there's no jeopardy left. Everyone knows everyone knows I, I, I beat sub three for the, for the marathon because because we've told them. Um, so I might as well tell them. It, it, I felt that unless I beat sub three for the marathon, the book wouldn't get commissioned because it was almost like who wants to read a book about a guy who tried to beat sub three for a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, 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 the, so the two became one, you know, and, uh, and, and, and I really, really wanted to write a book and I really wanted to beat sub three for the marathon. So it was, um, it was just a really nice synergy be, be, between the two. And, uh, and it was, a, it was a, um, a, a time in my life where I managed to get really super focused because I've sort of struggled with that a little bit uh, with my life, but, I really went a hundred percent in with the training required to do so, which I hadn't done since I was very young, and and, and I wanted to just, I just wanted to to write about it and explore and be honest about that journey of what it is for a recreational runner to go all in on an event, which a lot of people do, and how much it gives them and what you get back from that process, and, and by the same time, not take it too seriously as well, because. Um, we choose to do this. I think a lot of runners make themselves um, victims of this crazy training schedule that yeah. is enti entirely self-inflicted. <laughs> we know all about that. that. Yeah, yeah. All these <laughs> events that, like, you know, that, that you know, that, that, that they've done, done to themselves, and it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's good to take it seriously, but let's not take it ultimately seriously. It's fun. We're here for fun. We've we've chosen these events, um, so I wanted to have fun with it, and along the way, provide a bit of insight into training and the psychology of running and and encourage people to run i mean we we joked about it at the start but i do think i think a marathon is an event that most people can run um no matter how fit you can train yourself to get up to run a marathon at whatever speed and i think there's a lot in the experience i, th I think I, I always advise people if you if, if you all if you're at all thinking about it just run a marathon and i i i envy people their first marathon because it's a real it's a real adventure mm -hmm. uh, and every marathon you're not the same person at the end as you were at the beginning but i think that's most pronounced with your first one i really think there's something quite magical about that journey so i wanted to i wanted to en encourage people as well so before we um scare everybody off because you know we started the the whole podcast by saying that you stopped you had to start eating healthy and you stopped drinking during your training like do people have to do that if they're doing their first marathon or can they be serious but still maintain um the 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 it, I mean it, other things they like it's it, it's entirely up to you isn't it and, and 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 for years I did for years I'd uh I'd do gigs the night before marathons or listen, listen, it's well documented in the book. I love, I love, I love my wine. I love red wine. It is an ongoing relationship, you know, <laughs> uh, but I, I noticed don't drink. on the last page of your last page of your book for some weird reason, mm. there's nothing on the page, but in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a glass. There'll be a glass. Is, there? is that what they've done? There's, there's a glass and a oh, right. <laughs> okay. bottle of wine. Subliminal, yeah. Is this I mean, some sort of secret Da Vinci code to your wine swilling mates? I think, or something? I think that's the editor just having a laugh at my expense. Okay, um, that's what I think that is. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think, Liz, I think it's entirely up to you. All, all I can say is that, um, like most things, the more I gave to the marathon in terms of training, the more I got back from it. And it's like that's the thing with. Uh, with drinking, I listen. I I I love drinking. I, I, I but but I've noticed that when I'm training for events and drinking, it's just a bit uh, incongruent, isn't it? It's like you're battling mm -hmm. yourself. So there's something nice about to just say everything's just facing the same direction to defeat our self-sabotaging instincts for a while, of which I have many. So it, it's not. It, all I'll say is, of course you can, but it's nice if you don't for a while. It's just for me. It, was, it depends how much you drink, of course. I mean, you know. I, 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 <laughs> I, I drank every week um, and I, I still do drink every week, but it's getting less and less. And I only drink once a day now and it's less and less. But, you know, it's, it's just nice to sort of it's nice to, 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 to not drink for a while and feel different. And you, of course, your body reacts to it. And it's the same with food as well. The, the drinking and the food go hand in hand, don't they? Drinking. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but drinking and eating not great sort of go hand in hand. For, with me, it's like when I have a night drinking. It's not just what I drink, 
it's the it's the you know cheesy snacks at half twelve. Yeah. Do, do, do you know what I mean? It's the, yeah. it's the whole package. Do you know? It's the whole yeah. package. You need the and wine then, to sort of cut through the grease, don't you? Yeah, it's sort of yeah, yeah, and it's sort of and and the, the great thing about running is is that it is a little bit of a medicinal, isn't it? So it's a bit of a correct. Mm -hmm. So you can wake up a bit hungover and you go for a run through the woods, uh, which I love doing. And you come back and you feel you, you feel great. So run running can Except help. You. Except that you can feel actually even better if you didn't drink the night before, oh, and so you're not absolutely. hungover, right? A absolutely, absolutely. So, so Liz what? Is, let's Liz not, is a let's monk. Not, Liz is let's a not, monk. No, 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 no. Liz, you're on the right page. Of course, it's like why fight against yourself? We, we. I love running mm -hmm. more than I love feeling hungover. I mean, <laughs> you feel so great after a run. You feel so you feel so great. Why not be there more? And you feel great during the run if you feel fresh for it, and you warmed up and you do you know what I mean you just mm. if anything I think it's getting a it's getting a handle on how much for, for a lot of runners how much they they love running I mean we love running so much it's getting a you know it's getting it's keep keeping the balance of it the fitter you get that your friends start worrying about you and are you okay you look a bit <laughs> Yeah. Look a bit, look a bit, or you're you go see your parents and they're yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. you're looking a little uh thin are you eating? Liz, like, are you eating are you eating it's uh <laughs> but it's um but but, but, but yeah it's it, it's strange but the the iller you look the fitter you are and the fitter you want to be <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's hard to retain balance so you have that sort of hollowed out gaunt look which means you're marathon fit it means yeah. fit yeah exactly yeah. exactly yes exactly what i find as well with running you know just just as an aside is mm. I'm, I'm a bit of a beer drinker rather than a, right. a wine drinker. I like, I like beer and um, I don't have many beers and I now choose very specifically be, I choose beers like wines now. Right. So, okay, okay. I'm going to have those three beers in the next week. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and possibly you enjoy those beers a bit more because yeah, for sure. a bit, 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 bit more sporadic, but yeah, it's uh, we like being fit. And if you're training for a race, a lot, I talk a lot in the book about uh, how what fun it is to have an event, and it's like like I've already said, the more you the more you let the event answer questions and lead you through the next three months, the sim the simpler it is and the more fun it is. So, if you've got an event and you know if you're at the supermarket and just before you get to the end of the supermarket, it's like this in every country in the Western world, they put loads of chocolates just right near just right near That's before you. Cash. Because they know you're tired, because you made so many decisions during the whole, <laughs> during the whole supermarket process, and decisions tire us out. So by the time we get to the end, we're already tired. And chocolate seems like a really good idea. <laughs> it's all you know, psychological, you know. But it's like ask the event. What were the events like? You don't need the chocolate, so so you don't get the chocolate. And it's quite nice that it's almost like a sort of quasi religious sort of. Uh, mm -hmm. It almost makes some of the decisions for you, so you don't have Absolutely. to actually make them yourself. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you don't have to make those decisions; they're made for you. And it's like uh, that, that. That that can be where the fun is. But again, it's keeping it. It's keeping it in balance. Some people like live like that all the time. Liz, mm -hmm. possibly, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but for me, <laughs> you picked up. You picked up, Paul. But, 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 but for me, it's, but for me, it's more of a uh, sporadic experience. But it's one that I, that I really value because my lifestyle is pretty chaotic and it's a lot of traveling and loads of gigs all over. And it's quite hard to, there's no, it's quite hard to have the stability and, and the, the schedule and just get quality sleep that you need to really run hard, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but for, for the, for the period of this book for a few months, I went all in and uh, yeah, it was a really good fun. Yeah. So did you uh, like going all in, I mean, because uh, was this book already planned before you signed up for the marathon because what would you have done if you ended up running like three hours zero one seconds I, like would you have still written the book i would have probably still made oh. a book but three three or four i don't um to be honest i don't i mean, I, I i don't know i don't know whether they i i didn't have the book commissioned before i ran the, the sub three i ran the sub okay. three first and then i approached them and they said yes um we, 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 which was great and and that's sort of the reason why there's not that many uh photos of the day of me running it because i'm, I'm not very good at taking photos of myself anyway there's a photo mm -hmm. of me and my son afterwards and um so it was it was sort of retrospectively so we got commissioned for a few months afterwards but the mem the memory of, of it was uh was so intense i know people who beat who, who uh well i talk about a club mate in the book who who's run a three hours and uh 24 seconds marathon mm -hmm. um 
and he still, he, bless him, he still hasn't beaten it to, to this day. You know, it's, it's, it, it's not, it, of course, it's not very important. It's only 24 seconds, but there's something psychologically about, about it. You know, it's like, yeah. he's a much better runner than me it over is. 5K, is, 10K, yeah. you know, but there's something about, yeah. there's something magic about the three hour barrier. For some people, it's four hours, of course. It's, it's all relative. It's all, mm -hmm. you know, it's all relative to your starting point. But yeah, the three I hours. Tell, I tell you, we were on a, a podcast with Martin Yelling. You probably know Martin Yelling yeah, because Martin he's a Brit. Yeah. And he yeah. said to us, he said to us, it's just a time. It doesn't yeah. really matter if you're going through a good process. It doesn't really matter if you go, if you run and you do three hours and one second. And Liz and I went simultaneously. It darn well does matter. Of course it does. Of course it does. I mean, bless him. I mean, bless him. Of course, process is fantastic. And we love the process. But there, there is objective facts about the world, isn't there? <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and time is one of them. We live in a time-based reality. You know, we agreed to start this conversation at a certain time it doesn't mean you're lesser of a human being at all mm. it's just a it's that, that's what that's why we love sports isn't it and because it's quantifiable so i talk about this a little bit in the book so much of life is nuanced and a little bit mm -hmm. nebulous and who gets promotion at work and who's socially popular and who's who's physically attractive is a lot of elements outside outside your control or they might be political mm -hmm. or whatever mm -hmm. but the, and it's that simplicity of running isn't it it's like mm -hmm. the harder you train if you avoid injury the faster you're going to run the quicker your time is and that applies to all levels six hour marathon five four three i know people after two 20 marathons it's, it's, the, it's the same and I'll, I'll, that's its liberation isn't it that's its sort of you want to do as well as you can. I've got no problem with that. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm unashamed about that. Every now and again, I want to run as fast as I can, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's but, okay. It's okay to celebrate that. You so know? I guess the three-hour target for you was kind of obvious because that was the big milestone in front of you in terms of you probably had already figured you could run a four-hour marathon. So you're thinking, well, there's my target. And then London, mm -hmm. is that just because it was local to you? Why London? London was it's it's a marathon that i can get in for free oh, wow. oh now we <laughs> like, get the real story okay okay here here in canada we can't even get into it if we want to pay because you have to enter a lottery and you'll never get picked well you, you know, used know, your celebrity status to get in well for, it, well it, for it, nothing? It, I wouldn't say i would say because I, I i write a monthly column for runners world okay. um and they can normally get me in it's just one of those things that, listen, there's very few things. I can't get into any clubs. I can't get into any film premieres. <laughs> My celebrity status is, is draining by the day, but I can get into the London Marathon. And it's close, it's close to me. It's a fantastic event. I've only, I've run, I've, I've run like seven marathons and six have been in London. One was in York and that was brilliant as well. But it's nice to get to know a course once you get to know a course, it feels a bit more manageable, doesn't it, as well? You're, you're just yeah. more psychologically familiar. Mm -hmm. And it's that sort of, those mass events, the, uh, the, the the crowd, the support of the crowd, the intensity of it, it becomes a kind of, becomes quite addictive, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, when I, was a, when I was a kid training, to go back to you saying, was, was it a natural goal to be three hours of the marathon? When I was a kid, most people could beat three hours for the marathon. When I was a, when I was training in the eight, mid eighties, a lot most a lot of club runners were doing like 70, 80 miles a week, and it was sort of taken as read that you beat three hours for the marathon. It was just just was because sort of everyone did. Um, and then when I came back into running in my late thirties, I realised how hard it was. You know, I just I just assumed it would happen naturally, mm -hmm. and I ran my first marathon in three hours twenty two. As a kind of quite quite a fit footballer, really, and with a few runs, not that much. And then the second year, I trained quite hard to beat three hours, and I was on course till twenty miles, and then I hit the wall. I did three hours nine, and then you know I was just I was just kept on trying, and then I realised, for me anyway, it was really it was going to be really difficult. You know, um, I think it's a uh, it's it's achievable for people who are who are who are quite decent runners, but. It needs a lot of commitment. I think it's I think it's surprisingly difficult for a lot of people. I certainly found it surprisingly difficult. I only beat it by 39 seconds. And um it took a lot of mental and physical effort to do so. Um and I know people who are really fit and have already beaten three hours for the marathon and they'll drop in on a marathon and say, 
yeah, I think I can beat three hours this year. And think, but they don't really focus on it. And they find that they can't. There's something, it's, it's, mm. it's 26 miles at like 6.52, 6.53 pace per yeah. mile. You think in yeah. kilometers. It's so, 42 so. kilometers at 4.15 pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, 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 that's, pretty, that's pretty smart, isn't it? I mean, it's fast. You know, it's fast. Um, so, yeah, so I've, I've, I've sort of forgotten the, question, <laughs> forgotten the question now. But over the years, it became a natural it became a natural goal for me, certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah, the question was why three hours and why London? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and London, as I say, because of the, the mass nature of it, it's close. And it's and uh, you're a cheapskate. Yeah. And, I and mean, I'm, you can I'm a northern. I'm, I'm a northern. <laughs> you know, being from Gateshead, you know what we like in the north. I'm a Yorkshire. I'm a Yorkshireman. Yeah. Yeah. You can get something for free, then you have it. You know? I'm just extremely <laughs> jealous that you can... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that you can even get in. I mean, forget about know, the whole free know, part. I know, like, I know <laughs> it's so difficult. I know, of course, of course it is. The, all, all the lottery places and stuff. It's uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very difficult. I feel very lucky to be able to do it. So I've applied in the How- overseas lottery the last two years in a row to go to London. Mm. I figure I, I, if I keep doing that, eventually in probably about 30 years, on average, I should get one acceptance. You'll, you'll be there. You'll be there. Well, yeah. listen, I'll see, what I, I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can swing something. Oh, that would be something. <laughs> that would be something. Yeah. How much do you think um, just being surrounded? Because, you know, you just mentioned about when you were when you were a kid, uh, mm. the people that ran marathons were all like kind of fast and they were all running mm. for sub three hours. And it seems like, you, you know, like even gro- when you when you came back to running your your club mates seemed to be all kind of fast yeah. uh yeah. you know around yeah. the three hour mark and so it how much do you think that made you believe in the possibility of running sub three because i think sometimes also um you know maybe it's also a bit your like your belief system and your surroundings and many people might be in clubs where uh you know the average because i mean here in north america the average marathon finishing time is like four and a half hours so you know like a lot of people could be running with uh with the club mates that are you know more like uh, four hours or four and a half hours and so they probably probably don't even believe it's possible um do you think that contributed at all to your success I, I, I think i think it certainly did and also i mean the notion of success and something it's, it's it's all really relative i mean i i'm i'm the i'm the slowest i'm one of the slowest runners at, at my at my club that's just i i, I just am you know i just I, you know I'm, I'm sort of before before uh covid the great awfulness i was sort of like the sort of towards the end of the B group. There's an A, a B and a C group. And now I'm sort of mid-range C group. It's just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just sort of, I'm just sort of falling away, you know. Um, but it, but it's nice to be surrounded by faster runners. It is inspiring. Um, as I was a kid, it was inspiring. I, th- I think, I think the, um, I think the whole me beating sub three hours of the marathon, I think the foundations of that was laid when I was young because I was, I was quite fast when I was a kid and I did, I did a half marathon in 78 minutes and, you know, I was, I was fast and running a lot of miles when I was a kid. And it just sort of, it just, it just gets you used to, to, to what it is to run hard for a long time. And the better runners you are, you see, you see how they um, cope with uh, being tired. So much, of, so much of running fast time, so much of running, really, running races, running long races, is just running when you're really tired. <laughs> Beating sub three hours for the marathon, so much of it is, is making you know, 4.15 per kilometre, your default pace. So it doesn't matter how tired you are, you can just come out with 4.15. It's just getting, it's just just laying that into your DNA and your stride length and you you just, you just get used to it. You just, that, that's, that's it. And to see people who are faster than me, how they cope with feeling tired and it, 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 it is inspiring. And also I talk about it a little bit in the book as well. I think, um, I think language is really important. So whatever time you're aiming for, like could be four hours, five hours for me. It was sub three hours. It's just like I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run sub three. I'm got. I'm. I'm absolutely going for it. Whenever I talked about it, um, mm. I, I wasn't. I, it wasn't like I'm gonna do my best. You know, I'm, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and beat three hours of the marathon. It was like I was sort of encoding. I was sort of encoding it as a possibility in my mind. I'm a big believer in that. I am a big believer, especially for um, ath- athletic events. Just sort of. Just be aware of your of uh, of your self talk around around the experience. You know, I'm beat. I'm beating four hours. I'm gonna. I'm I'm going for it. This is it. I'm doing. I'm doing all the training. I'm gonna do it. It's just 
it's just quite a nice healthy way of saying it. because if you say I'm gonna I'm trying I'm you're already sort of you're already preparing sort of, yourself to um, yeah, fail you, you, yeah you, you're sowing the seeds for having a really good sort of I did my best kind of but on the day you know you're just sort of sowing the seeds for um, your own not 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 doing it so why not why not go the other way with it just did as an experiment you really really believe that when you said when you say I'm going to beat sub three or are you just trying to psych yourself into the belief it's sort of it, it, it's a sort it's a sort of bit of both I saw it as a possibility and then the more yeah. I the more I train and then but the, it, but then you chunk it down so it's like if you're going to beat beat sub three what you, you want to be doing you want to be doing around about 85 minutes for a half marathon so I did I did a half marathon in 87 and a half and then the next one I did was 85 minutes back, almost bang on mm -hmm. so so then it feels realer and then then you do your um your session before your 10 your 10 800 meter reps with two minutes yeah so yeah mm -hmm. so you get that mm -hmm. under three minutes and I did you know and it was just you see these so you're just chunking chunking it down and then yeah if you, if, if you do all the training for for what for the event whatever time you're after, you just feel, first off, you're lucky if you can do it, if you can get through it with no injuries and everything's fine. So you should be grateful for that. And it just gives you, it gives you strength, doesn't it? And then the book talks about, um, talks about different aspects of, of motivation. It's just like, you know, when I run for, an, uh, during the day for an hour in the woods, it's a very slow, often a very slow meditative experience. And, you know, I have, I, it feels it has spiritual elements to it. I feel I feel very peaceful. I love nature. It's very calming, and just the movement and the sweat. It, feel, it feels fantastic. Uh, but when I'm trying to do a race that's going to involve sort of suffering, you know, you're gonna, it's going to it's going to hurt. Marathons hurt. Mm -hmm. you know? um, it's not always do. it's not always as it's not always as it's not always as pretty in your mind. Sometimes you have to, and so I explored that process as well of just like what it what it was bringing up. You know, was the was I maybe a little angry at certain things, or was the what 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 was really in my motivation to sort of really um, push into the wall, you know? Because I'd always run the marathon, I'd come up to the wall, and um, I'd end up being consumed by it, you know. And then he, yeah. <laughs> he, would, mm -hmm. he would eat me up and spit me out at twenty five miles, and I'd just, I'd just be a mess. Yeah. But, but I knew if I, if I wanted to be in there, uh, if I want, yeah, we've all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Um, and if I wanted to beat three hours for the marathon, I had to, uh, I had to engage with it. I had to, it, it, there was an element, there's an element of battle in it. You know, you see it in serious athletes when they, when they, when they're fighting through the wall, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's tough fun, but you can't really describe it as fun running. Do you know what I mean? There's something mm -hmm. else going on and there's something else going on that we're all attracted to and that we all enjoy. Um, and it was sort of thinking about that and why do we enjoy it and what, what what is it about and what can help us push through it so the, you know the, and and so i reflect on that a little bit during the book and that was just an honest that's just being honest about the whole process i wanted to be honest about the process of what it was so yeah you yeah. seem to draw strength from i don't know being angry at your childhood and your situation with yeah, your so there's a little bit of that, but it, it sort of um there was a little bit of that but i didn't realize until quite late on in the process that I sort of that that, that was sort of coming out in races a little bit I mean yeah. it's very sort of honest thing to say isn't it because it's sort of it's quite an unattractive sort of personality trait to say I'm angry yeah. <laughs> how would you describe yourself oh, yeah. oh I'm angry I'm one of those angry people um, yeah. and, and in life we try not to be angry of course of course and, and especially inflict it on other people um, but I think maybe running's a way that sort of there is a sort of element of dispersed there's something happening that might be dealing with sort of you know demons things that have happened to us a way of sort of running through it a kind of negotiation uh with it i realized in my the, the, during the process of writing the book that and the experience of training for the marathon and wanting to run hard into the wall that and the desire to, to sort of win to sort of um was the wall became representative of uh, a voice that told me that I was going to fail in the end or I wasn't good enough or mm -hmm. certain voices that, 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 that had come yeah. from my childhood. And so it became a sort of way of laying those demons to rest, you know, and sort of and using positive anger as a way, th as, as a way through that. I'm going to take it on. You know, I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to win. I'm going to win this. You know, I'm going to slay this. You know, it sounds really dramatic. 
Um, and, and in a way, it, it, it is dramatic. I mean, you really gave it a, a positive spin, like, uh, you know, in, in doing that. I mean, you know, because you do kind of talk about that and how, you know, we don't want to be angry in everyday life. We don't want to, you know, be yes. angry at our kids, at our spouse course, for no course. reason or, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and so you kind of put it into your running instead. But, uh, you know, I think you 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 had valid reason to be carrying maybe some of that anger. I don't know yeah. if you want to talk a little bit about the relationship yeah, yeah. you had with your um, with your stepmom. Yeah, we can talk a little bit about it. I mean, it, it's a little bit, you know, the, the, you know, the, you, you talk about people who are still alive and and also people who are still um, had contact with for years and years, and also, you know, every every behavior. Of course, as we get older, we realize every behavior's coming from another behavior. You know, it's all it's all a result. Pe people don't intentionally uh, want to come into a family environment and just and, and not be nice to kids. They're just something's mm -hmm. playing out in their lives yeah. that they can't control themselves. You know, so. Um, yeah, my, my, my dad got remarried and uh, the woman who who he got married to was obviously not ready to have uh, to, to, to deal with children. And um, it was just immediately a different atmosphere around the house and very sort of almost militaristic and there was loads of rules to be had and sort of jobs had to be done, had to be done in a certain way and and, and there was there was violence around the house. There was, you know, she, she was violent. So, you know, the home was a place of, uh, it was fearful. It was a fearful place. And it was a place mm -hmm. where you, you had no control. Um, it was a place where when you went home from, from, you know, there was some days where from the minute you got home, um, you were locked into a cycle that would end in violence inevitably, you know, so do you be told to, do a job and you'd always fight the job could never be, be done right or do you know they you know, they're yeah. very functional things mm -hmm. um, and it was uh it, it it was difficult it was undoubtedly difficult and also it's only as you leave those environments that you realize how unusual that is because when mm -hmm. you're a kid it's all you know yeah you just assume everyone you just assume everyone's living like this you know and we didn't go around other people's houses really and when people came around our house it was a bit weird it was just, just, it just, just wasn't right. Nothing was right. You know, you'd have a meal and it's really ten. Every, it, it just wasn't. Um, and of course, when you have kids yourself, uh, you don't want to pass these, these, these behaviours on. So yeah. you got, you know, I had therapy and that, because that was one thing that, that was determined. I'm not going to pass this on. So I had mm -hmm. therapy. Uh, and, uh, and I can say that I haven't, you know, which is not to say I haven't made different mistakes, but I haven't mm -hmm. made those mistakes. Do you know what I okay. mean? Okay. You know, well, I mean, we I all have to make some mistakes. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. I might have been, perfect. I might have been indulgent. I might have been overindulgent. I might have been whatever. But it's just like, you know. So, um, you know, life's a process. We all want to. We all want to get happier. And but, but, I suppose the book talks about despite all the all the ther the therapy that I'd had, there were still vestiges of little bits of anger in me, little triggers. Because when you experience these things, they happen physically, don't they? They become mm -hmm. they're physical experience, and it becomes encoded in your everyday reality so you feel triggers like you'd like to, like you'd hear steps around the house and it remind me of being a kid and, step, and she's angry and she's coming downstairs or with so you know it felt like I needed something physical to try and get through this and the marathon became part of that process um and at the end of the marathon I talk about um forgiving uh my mum for this thing and I do it sounds schmaltzy but I, I I I do feel I have I do feel it was part of the process of just Mm -hmm. just letting go of it battling with it but myself going through all that suffering getting aggressive getting angry doing it it just felt like just felt quite just felt very very relaxed afterwards it just sort of like i think that's the, that's the joy of the marathon on whatever level you choose to do it i think mm -hmm. the sophisticated word is cathartic yeah it's cathartic there's cathartic elements but there's cathartic elements at every speed because it's hard work and it's a um it's a private experience played out in public. You've got all these people saying, come on, come on. And you're inside, you're thinking, and then you finish and it's just, it's such a lovely feeling to, to finish, to stop running after all that time. It's so, it's so joyous and you feel so at peace, you know, and the harder you run, maybe the more at peace you feel when you stop. So, so yeah, I felt, um, you know, a lot of us use running, for a sort of sort of therapy mm -hmm. and it has medicinal qualities and, and the marathon was part of, of that of me sort of 
growing up and becoming aware of things that I maybe thought I ha- I'd dealt with but hadn't quite dealt with and helping me to deal with them. Which is not to say now that you're that you're speaking to some sort of enlightened guru who's you know mm-hmm. completely reached I've reached self actualization or whatever. I'm so highly flawed, but it's just how it just it definitely helps me. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you're you're you've got some non-running friends, and you know the your friend Richard. It seems like um, he's he has this theory that all runners are running away from pain. Um, yes. I, I'm yes. not sure he's correct about that because I feel like we are embracing pain by running. <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're, you're ab- absolutely right. So, and I talk about that in the book as well. It's not running from. It's not running. That's a lovely observation. It's not running from, it's running towards, isn't it? It's kind of like, we know it's there mm-hmm. and, we're, and we're seeking it out um, because uh, let's face it, there's, there's, there's a lot of pain in life. So it's, so, so we sort of, it's almost baked in, isn't it? It's guaranteed, mm-hmm. it's guaranteed. And there's something quite pleasurable in the negotiation and acceptance of pain and, and running sort of provides that, you know, there's something, there's something, there's something, uh, we've talked about a bit cathartic. There's something very cleansing, isn't it, about a good run or a, a, a good long run? And it's like there's yeah, there's, there's elements of pain. So yeah, no, you're right. We're not running away. We, we, we're running to it, you know. And people could say you drink to run. You, you're drinking because of pain, or you're eating loads because of pain, or whatever. You know, it's sort of it's quite a healthy way to deal with it, isn't it? Because we all feel it to a certain extent. Things like life's happen. Life happens. We're born. Mm-hmm. Uh, innocent innocent beings benevolent be- beings um and things tend to happen that make us have to have to readjust and recalibrate what living's about and that's a normal part of, of, of becoming a human being and growing and, and it, becoming compassionate for other people and stuff but it does involve some pain you're not going to avoid it but runners run to what we we put on our shorts and and run towards it you know yeah and have fun there <laughs> We touched on it a little bit um, earlier, but it does seem to me like the life, and you describe it a little bit in your book, the life of a stand-up comedian and the lifestyle of a marathon runner are somewhat contradictory. Yeah, they are. It's, yeah, they, they are because st- stand-up comedy is, it's lots of, it's hours and hours in cars. Um, and then it's, it's a massive high because um, you make people laugh for 20, 30 minutes, which is an incredible experience. A bit like the end of a marathon, it has to be said. I mean, a bit like that sort of feeling of Euphoria. when you feel, yeah, well, you feel really blissed out after a good run and you mm. feel really connected with everyone and there's, there's, no, there's no drama. It's just you're just accepting yeah. of every, everyone and everything. That's how it feels at the end of a good gig, you know. So, so it's, it's nice. I feel very lucky to be able to do it. Um, the only problem is when I finish doing it, I'm often 200 miles away from home, <laughs> and, I, and I have to drive back, and 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 th- that often involves eating quite rubbish foods in the in the process, you know, sort of, you know, whatever you get in a motorway. It's not too bad. My choice of meal tends to be a egg mayo sandwich, uh, a chocolate bar, and crisps and a coffee, and it's a bit, you know. I just feel it's almost impossible to resist at a certain time when I've got so much, <laughs> so many hours, so many hours in a car left. Um, so yeah, it's, and, and then you get to bed at half two in the morning, and then the next, and then you don't feel like running fifteen miles at ten o'clock in the morning. You're just tired out, especially as you get older. So yeah, Monday, Mondays. If if I'm training for a marathon, Monday's my long run day. It's just you know your weekends Monday, Tuesday, um, because you work. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and often Sunday. So it just, you just go, you just m- make alterations, you know. But a lot of uh, a lot of comedians run, and they're the ones who tend to last longer in the industry because it's quite. It's <laughs> take its toll. It does take its toll. Yeah, of course it does. And you know, you, you've got guys who drink a lot, and they drink and go on stage, and then it works. So what does that mean? If if you have a drink and then go on stage and you're funnier. Mm-hmm then uh, you're drinks. basically an alcoholic. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's, you know, so, you know, because you know, we're all looking for things that work in our life and that works. And then you drink, then you come off stage, you feel great. You have a drink to keep it going. You, you, it can be very, you know, it can be, it can be, it can be very difficult to stay fit and healthy. Yeah. Slippery slope. By the way, if anybody, any of our listeners, particularly in North America, have never seen uh, Paul Tonkinson in action on stage doing his standup routine, check out YouTube. But Make sure you have at least an hour available if you do that, because um, if you check them out, you're going to be clicking through uh, stuff, routine after routine, probably. That's good. So. That's good. My, son, my son wants to set up a YouTube channel. I have, I'm very disorganized with all that, but he wants to set it up for me. But Oh, that's great. 
yeah, 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 how, yeah. How did you um, get into comedy? I um, I was studying at, at Manchester. I was I was quite funny at school. Uh, I mean, I talk I talk about it um, a little bit in the book. I was always I was sort of late for class, and I had a wonderful teacher. Um, uh, Mr. Foot, a physics teacher, and, and if you were late for class, instead of telling you off, he'd ask you why you were late, and I'd sort of start telling stories about why I was late and making the class laugh. And it just became a kind of, it was so kind, and he just let me do it. So, I'd, so I'd end up being later, you know? <laughs> I'd end up being later, <laughs> but I'd have more of a story to tell. Um, so I realised I was funny, but a lot, there's a lot of f- funny people in, in life, but the, being a stand-up's uh, a little bit different. But I, And then I went to Manchester University and to, uh, doing drama, and I started doing it then. And, and the feeling of doing it is so good. The feeling of being on stage and getting laughs is so good that it's impossible to do anything else once you've had that experience. I mean, it's just like, I went to Manchester University, I wrote a sketch. Uh, there was a night where everybody performed to everybody else, and I went on stage and did it, and, and people started laughing. And that moment, uh, as, a, as an 18 year old just changed my life and it's just like that's it then um so I was extremely lucky and uh, and then I went from there to doing clubs in Manchester and I was the, I was one of the few people working uh, as a stu- as a drama student and earning earning money I mean how popular was I you know, I was earning cash people would pay me cash no one had cash as a student um <laughs> And now no one pays in cash anymore, so it's come full circle. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but for years it was cash, you know, and it was such a good feeling. Comics are very, um, very cash driven, you know. We'll do anything for just a bit of cash. Even now, if someone says well, we'll pay you cash, you take you take gigs for much less money than others because they'll give you cash, you know. Um, so yeah, I was I was I was lucky, and it and it, and it worked. And I hit a time in uh, the stand up. Uh, comedy history where I hit the boom years in the 90s um, in London where there was loads of clubs as well so yeah I've been doing it off and on for nearly 30 years now so describe doing a few things with um, your buddy a well-known guy Michael McIntyre yeah we, well we, yeah we, we went to we, we've been to Canada actually and we, we went to New York we did, he did Radio City Hall yeah I've I've gigged a lot with with Michael, and we we good friends. We have the same manager. Um, in the book, I talk about a, a week at the Mayor Clinic. That's the uh, bit I was trying to get to because yeah, 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 yeah. That immensely was, that was, entertaining part of the book. Yes, it was, it was so strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> people it was, pay uh, to go these to this place. I know, I know. It's incredible, isn't it? It's it's people go to the Mayor Clinic, uh, which is which is in in the Alps to get fit to get fit and healthy for for a week to lose weight. Very very rich people. Very, that's what rich people do. Normal people just don't eat much for a week and just drink water. And, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Just like, I mean, it's not hard, is it? Do you know, but really, to lose, I mean, lose weight, it's difficult, but it's not, but the methods of doing it are well known. It's not a know. complex process. <laughs> no, it's not a complex yeah. process. You eat less than you, than you expend, you know, you eat less than you expend energy and then you just keep, keep going. And, um, but anyway, so, you know, very rich people go to, go to Switzerland and talk to doctors who give them lots of sort of potions and, and, and a lot of it is just food denial. You know, they go and pay lots of money to be denied food, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, and to go into a hotel room where there's no food and there's no room service. I mean, that's just a bad hotel for most of us. That's <laughs> the rea- just the reality that we all live. Um, but Michael um, um, is, a, is, is a rich person and I'm his friend. So he paid for me to go with him for, for a week. And I had a week there running around the woods in Switzerland, which was, which was great, and, and not eating much, which was very, it has to be said, very challenging mm. to, to, to be hungry at, say, four in the afternoon and to have no food around. Yeah. It's, quite, mm. it's, it's also quite, very bad for recovery from what we've done. It sounded yeah, like you're being tortured. It's not good for runners, no. It's not, it's not good for runners, no. Not and recommended. Was, uh, yeah. No, not recommended, no. But there was, um, I'll talk about a, uh, a, a woman there who's like, who, uh, a, a sort of very posh, English woman who'd been sent there by her husband, which is awful. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. It's awful. It's horrendous. Her husband had sent her there to lose weight. It's horrendous. And she's like, I've got to lose weight or it'll keep me in another week. It was like she was a prisoner, you know. And she's like, <laughs> oh, she'd, cre- she'd, crept in, she'd crept into the kitchen in the middle of the night and found an apple or something, you know. And she just got me <laughs> incredibly excited. And everyone was paying for this. It's just like absolute, <laughs> mad, absolute <laughs> madness. But that's the rich, isn't it? It's another world. It's crazy. They're, they're, it's a different reality. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a, it, listen, it's a good chapter. 
Um, I it lost, is. I, I, I lost nearly stone. Michael lost some weight, and it, yeah, fun was had by all. And we left <laughs> two days early because Michael couldn't handle it either. We just looked at each other and just said, "What, what are we doing?" You know, I was on the verge of tears. I was sort of eating the so wall. So hungry. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Michael was, you know. So, so, we, so we left. We bailed out of that one. We didn't last the week, but yeah, it was good fun. It was fun while it lasted. <laughs> So you talk about your wife. Um, uh, mm. You always refer to her as Ra. Ra. Is it, or is it, Ra. is it Ra or Ray? It, it's Ra. Yeah, it's okay. Ra. Ra. Okay. Phew. Oh, At oh. least I got that one right. Because That's usually good. whenever I pronounce things, Alan laughs at me because it's wrong. So. <laughs> it right. it's, it's short for Rachel. Yeah, Let's go how she pronounced Wickham. Um. <laughs> how do you pronounce Wickham? Wycombe. Well, it was, no, it was, it was Wycombe. written Wycombe Rye. So <laughs> <laughs> I just said it like it's written. Of course, as you would. Why wouldn't you? Oh. We're trying to have English people on the podcast take us seriously in pronouncing, <laughs> pronouncing Wycombe Rye. I obviously was not pronouncing it right the whole time I was reading the book. Um, in my head, I, I, I got it. It was down. Um, yeah, I know so your wife's called Rachel. Yeah, so I thought yeah. your RA might be pronounced. No, no, Ray. you're right. That, that would make sense, yeah. but no, it's always been Ra. Yeah. So she's yeah. named after a sun god. Sun god Ra, yes. Yeah. Yes, apparently, yes. Um, so she's very supportive of your running goals, but I, I don't know, it wasn't, I didn't really grasp whether or not she she was a runner herself. Um, I would say that she's not. No, okay, occasionally... She runs. I mean, she, she she's fairly supportive. She, she's not that bothered, to be honest. <laughs> she's not she's not that interested. Uh, but she, she she she'll come down and watch me. And she came and she enjoyed uh, the marathon. She um she runs occasionally. She's actually quite a natural runner. Um, but she just doesn't run. She just doesn't run much. It's weird. she just she doesn't does. train. But she if she did, train. she would be amazing. If, if she did, if she did, she'd, she'd be fine. She wouldn't be amazing, but she'd be fine, and she could do it. She can just she can still. She doesn't do any running. If she wants to, she can just go and run like three or four miles or something. She's one of those people. Oh, wow. She's really, she's really into wild swimming. Everyone's, I don't know if that's hit Montreal. It seems all, to all be a London craze country. in the UK yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah. It's, they've, they've, they've just gone mad for wild swimming, you know. So, uh, so she's What exactly is wild swimming? It's swimming in lakes or, oh, you know, rivers okay, okay. Or, the, or the sea. It's for people who can, who can tolerate extremely cold temperatures um so it's almost like the colder it is the more they seek it out i mean but that's a level of pain that i can't be i can't do i can't do that no same this and i sometimes do the running version of wild swimming in winter we run across the lake yes do that Mm. (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. it's much warmer it's much warmer if you run across the lake because then you can wear all your clothes yeah of course (laughs) and also you you generate it's great running in the cold because you generate your own heat isn't it running in the snow is amazing i mean it's fantastic um but no she's uh She's 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 supportive of me when I do when I do marathons to a certain extent. Although, you know, you know, the negotiation to like spend that's why I do my long runs as well on a Monday because you know to take two and a half three hours out of your Sunday is a bit is a bit galling, isn't it? Especially when you've been gigging Friday and Saturday night. So it mm-hmm. needs a, an understanding partner, doesn't it, uh, to cope with with marathon runners? Um, so yeah, I try and do that my run. When, when, when she's at work yeah you also need an understanding partner to cope with stand-up comedians probably as well so she's a double yeah. so no wonder she's named after a sun god yeah 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 no she's a very she's a i mean in terms of stand-ups are uh, it's notoriously difficult to maintain a relationship with stand-up, with stand-up comedians there's been a slew of separations post covid um which is a really oh, wow. bad sign which is a really bad sign if you think about it because when all the comedians were finally at home living yeah, with their nobody wife, could stand them they realized what they were like <laughs> oh no <laughs> so uh so no <laughs> i'm very i'm very lucky she's amazing she's very understanding um and she she knew me just before i got into stand-up comedy so um and she's coped with the uh, the industry and all the travel that it, that it involves and yeah it's uh it's nice to have a contrast she's always had like a steady job or we've been there for me and yeah it's and you know she obviously likes the excitement of you know big gigs and bits of travel that, that we get to go on together so it, it works yeah very lucky yeah i'm trying to take some time out here in case she listens to it to sort of big to big her up yes because i've also heard some of your stand up oh no she yeah i know i know well i mean she, she's most of my set i mean she's most in terms <laughs> yeah. of like 
in the terms ladies' of night out, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. In terms of actual material, she's basically she's she's the vast majority of it. I, I'm, I'm quite unimaginative <laughs> as a stand-up. I talk about the things in front of me. I talk about my wife and my kids. Uh, and my dog and my do you know what I mean I talk quite <laughs> different things but it's because I love them it's a manifestation of love do you know what I mean and uh, stand-up's a celebration of, of funny things she's a, she's a very very funny person um, she's deep she's just comic she's deeply comic um, and that's a I really need that I really need a good laugh around the house and she she provides that and she's okay with she's okay with the act I've cleared it I've cleared it but she's fine with it she's okay. that's good to hear <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's paid for the, it's paid for the holidays. Yeah, well, yeah. Talking about holidays, and and one of the things in the book is actually one of the little chapters is you you went to Cuba on an all inclusive vacation about five weeks before the marathon. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. And what so for me you to do that, this, and also also for me this wouldn't be a problem because I don't drink. But Good for you, me. I mean, Good normally, you. like you would love to drink in an all inclusive. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, that yeah. must have been uh, quite the experience. It was, it was, it was tempting. It was, it was very tempting. It was, it, it, it actually turned up being a great week. That, that was one of those weeks where uh, I had to uh, talk to the, ask the event, uh, <laughs> whether I could go on an all-inclusive holiday or not. And when I was there, uh, what I was allowed to do. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't drink. I, it, by that stage, I was so close to the marathon that, it would have felt ridiculous to undermine it uh, with loads of drinking, but it was really hard when you know Billy Joel's playing in the bar, and you got loads of North America, loads of people from North America actually just singing and singing to Piano Man, downing the shots. It was quite a hard environment yeah. to be at, um, but I managed to resist it, and I found a really um, only runners c- can relate to this. I found a really flat out and back run, which I did virtually every day during the holiday, just five miles out and five miles back but the five miles back it was so such a fast flat surface uh, and I really enjoyed sort of doing sort of try to run hard on the way back and you know you know really sweating loads running as fast mm-hmm. as you can on a fast flat so five weeks away from the marathon feeling really fit and strong you know and then I'd come back into the lobby just absolutely drenched with sweat <laughs> you know and this wasn't wasn't too flashy restaurant, but people would be getting ready for dinner, and you know, loads of you know, hey, they're all well dressed. They're all well dressed in their little chinos and slacks, and I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but feeling just exultant, feeling amazed, and just just you know, because obviously it's hot in Cuba as well, and mm-hmm. I love running in the heat. I love to sweat, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. So it was deeply, it was deeply pleasurable, and and uh, it was a great week, and I managed to. No booze, no booze past my lips. I was very lucky. Yeah, very lucky. Just ask the events. Once again, I made a great, great chapter in the book. Yes, yeah. Well, I mean, the way the the, the way the book was structured was um, it had sort of three strands between um, the race itself. I tried. I wanted to tell the race itself as if it was happening yeah. at that moment, sort of present yeah. moment, because that's the sort of narrative motor of of, of, of the book, um, and then the training and the process of doing of doing the events of, of training for it and then the, the psychological journey which involved going back into childhood and what formed yeah. me and and then at the end try to bring all three together you know so I really enjoyed sort of planning planning the book I planned it a lot uh, yeah. and, and, and each chapter what I wanted to get out of each chapter and and I think uh, the book does a great job I mean it, it hooks you in and and the the tension builds up you know um good, good. Good, I know that, 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 that's good to hear it. I was trying to, you just, as, as a, like a sort of, almost sort of a, a sort of thriller, you know, the, the race becomes a bit of a thriller um, through through the book. And, and I, it was, I really enjoyed writing. I just really enjoyed a bit of stability. I mean, I, I still did gigs, but I spent a lot of days just going to my table. What am I going to write today? This chapter, 1500 words. It was really a very, very enjoyable, simple process, you know, and, uh, and the feedback from the book's been great. I felt I felt very. It's, it's a privilege to write a book, of course, and mm-hmm. um, and to read and to connect with people like that. It's um, you know, and you don't want you don't want to waste people's time. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of books written about running, and if you want to sort of throw yours onto the pile, you want it to have um, you want it to have some intention about it, and 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 it to, to be as good as good as it can be. So I spent a lot of time, a lot of time making it as good as it can be, and uh, and uh, so far people have been very uh, they've been very nice about it. 
Yeah, I think because Liz and I have also, you know, been through a, a sub three hour journey in the last year. Mm. We're sort of reading your book and looking for, looking for. Okay, he's going through this. You know, he's going through yeah, his yeah. version mm-hmm. of this thing yeah. that we did, and so we yeah. were identifying really strongly with you. And then when you started describing the race, we're going, "Oh no, he's gone. He's gone. He's, he's not going to make it because you were behind your pace goal. He's, we're like, oh no, this he's is only got that's a few, it. He's got a few seconds ahead. Now he's a few seconds behind. Now behind. he's a few more seconds behind. We know how this works. He's yeah, yeah, he, he's done. He's a dead man walking. Yeah, 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 of course. We do, we do know how that works. And, it's, and it is a matter of trying to keep your head during that during the wall process and get, getting really tired. And the, the big, my, my big tip, which it has to be said, I thought might possibly catch on, but I don't think it has. <laughs> I don't think it has. But my, my, my big tip um, that really helped me was, um, was restarting uh, the watch at 20 miles and saying, I'm now in a five mile road race. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because my idea was, and my experience of races is that the last mile always takes care of itself because it just- Alan says that all the time. Yeah, you're so- Uh, Every time we have intervals. It's like we're doing eight eight times 300 or whatever, or eight times 200. He's like, no, no, seven times. The last yeah, yeah, one will do itself. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. You still have to run it. <laughs> you still have to do it, but you're so close. And psychologically, you've got, it's like an invisible force is, is, is pulling you in. So I thought, I thought I need, I need something that I understand and something that's simple to carry me through that 20 to, to you know, the, the, the wall. So I thought, I'm just going to do a five mile road race now. I'm going to stop. I'm going to start from nothing. So did you physically I'm- stop your watch and restart it? I physically did that, yeah. I physically restarted my watch, yeah. So, and That's I thought, a big leap. It is a big leap, yeah. And I thought, I'm going to do, and I just need to do every mile in roundabout or just under seven minutes. So it's just like, I need to hit 25 miles in 35, in 35 minutes. And the advantage of that was that it gave me a boost and it made me, it, 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 just, it just helped me navigate that, that, that very tricky period. Um, but of course, the disadvantage is you get to 25 miles and you hit 35 minutes and you don't really know where you are. You don't really know where yeah. you are. And you're, you're, in man, you're in a man minus 30 seconds. Yeah. You don't really know. <laughs> you're completely untethered, you know, but, but it sort of, it sort of, it sort of works. And there was, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I talk about a lot of people like, like the guy uh, who didn't beat three hours, my friend who'd, who'd run the marathon in three hours and 24. And we'd done a lot of training and he's a great natural athlete. And he, he overtook me during the race about 18 miles. And then I overtook him at about 24 miles. I don't know whether, and the wheels came off just a little bit for him. I don't know whether it would have, would have, mm-hmm. wouldn't have, or would have, but it just, it just sort of, yeah. it just sort of, it was just something that locked me in. All I can say is it really works. It really works for me. Yeah. There's actually one part of uh, where you talk about like chunking the marathon and how uh, you, you had mentioned, cause you know, the marathon is not like uh, the first half and the second half. So the first half is, 21.1 kilometers and the second half is 21.1 kilometers it's more like well the first half is uh you know 30 or 32 kilometers and the That's second true. half is the last 10 um, yeah, 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 yeah. and Absolutely. that really made a lot of sense because like that last 10 really same feels amount of effort. hard yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 about um it's about looking after your mental resources it's like uh it's like in terms of effort, the last six miles are by far the hardest. So in a way, in a way, in terms of like the mental effort, there's a there's a big case because for years, you know, I ran marathons under the notion that 30 miles is halfway. You, sorry, I think in miles, you think in kilometers. 21 kilometers was halfway, but then I just realised that it ju- it just wasn't working for me. I had to reframe it. It's that sort of that marathon thing. It's just like the whole the whole thing about trying to run a fast marathon is not dispersing energy when you don't need to so you, you want to be mm-hmm. you want to be floating through the first 10 kilometers and then you're sort of keying in and then you hit 21 and you're tired of course you're tired because you it's at race pace and then you hit you know 28 29 30 it's getting really hard and you're entering a different zone and your form starts to change as you get tired you're just moving a bit differently it's a very intense experience and for me it helped to see 20 miles you know 30 i think it's 32 kilometers as halfway um and then and i need a new angle i need a change of approach and you, you take your people take gels and drinks etc and yeah it's uh it's the mental the mental game of it the mental mm-hmm. the mental struggle for it 
and not accepting that you naturally that you're naturally going to fall apart like I always had you know I had to think of I had to contain it and I also had the guy who I talk about in the book who uh, who appeared round about the 23 and a half mile point like some kind of as I was starting to lose it um the guy who who just pointed at me from the crowd and stood up on the fence like some sort of bearded angel mm -hmm. I, I, to this day I don't know whether I know him I don't know I don't know whether I knew him or I knew him and he just said Tonkinson Paul Tonkinson <laughs> you've got this and so I'm pointing at me you're looking great you've got and it just really helped to kind of yeah you, you know you're starting to fall apart a bit psychologically you're looking into the crowd I think that's something to think of as well is just where do you want your mates to be in the crowd? Where do you want the people to, you know, to, to, to hit you? You might not want them there at 10 kilometers. You don't really need them then, but you need them in mm -hmm. class. You need and also in... what, what do you want them to say? Cause sometimes it's that, that phrase. And like, you know, I, I've also been in that situation where I'm running and I'm in a really bad place and um, I'll just see the, the, a sign, like, uh, you know, somebody holding a sign that says something that really kind of speaks to you. And you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, OK, yeah. I'm going to just think about that for the next Maybe. kilometer. And it just I, it just brings you out of it sometimes. It helps, sometimes yeah. it doesn't, but sometimes it does. It, help, it absolutely helps, of course. And, but of course, sometimes sometimes people people saying looking good doesn't doesn't strike the right car doesn't strike the mm -hmm. right door, does it because i know i'm not Look, I, know I definitely I'm not, not there, looking there good. To go. come on liz it might not sometimes it can get annoying do you know what i mean crowds bless them they're, they're, they're yeah. doing their best but it can get annoying so yeah i'm yeah. not looking good and i'm not <laughs> nearly there <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> nearly there that's really when you've got five miles to go it's, and you yeah. realize how far away that is <laughs> um, yeah it's pretty far <laughs> It is pretty far, but you know, bless them. They're, they're doing their best and they've come out to, and they're of course, they're, I talk about this in the race as well. They're, they're sort of projecting all over us as well, aren't they? They're into, they feeling our struggles, albeit at a distance. It's very, mm -hmm. it's amazing that so many people come out and they come out to see people struggle and to help them. And it's sort of in some way, they're, it's, it's part of their own struggle as well, isn't it? It's a, it's, it's a wonderful thing that people do that. And, you know, people running for charity and the, everyone's you know everyone's running for their own private reasons and it's a very uh we talk about catharsis it's a mass catharsis isn't it it's catharsis on a mass yeah. on a mass level you know so it's great to be part of you know i, I had this sort of psychological thing in, in the in the end in terms of trying to motivate, motivate myself where I, I try to imagine and convince myself that every single person who's cheering has only come out for me they've only come right. to see me Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works for you, they're all fantastic. cheering for me and uh, they all, that's all right. calling that's for great. me. If it works for you, that's fantastic. I mean, I talk about yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I um where where are you in your sub marathon sub three journey? Where whereabouts are you? Have you got one coming? You've got one coming up in October, both of you. Yeah. Yeah, we did one in October that just passed. So right, we okay. we what, ran three oh five. Three oh five, cool. Yeah. Cool. And great. Alan great. just under three oh five and I ran okay. three oh five. That's a great time. That's that's a great time. And what was your? How were you up to? Were you were you were you after? Were you going for sub three? Were you on for? Yeah, what, what, we were. Yeah, we're we on targeted we had, halfway. Right. What 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 time yeah. did you go through halfway in? Um, one twenty nine. One twenty nine. Sorry. One twenty nine forty five. It was like fifteen. We had fifteen seconds to spare. It was like exactly perfect, except right. that the last. The, so it was uh, two out and backs. So right. it was really easy. Like in that, it was really nice to kind of break it up. It's broken up for you. It's like yeah, yeah, 10K, yeah, yeah. turn around, 10K, come back. Yeah, You're yeah, at yeah, half, yeah. then another 10K out and back. Um, yeah. But the, the problem is um, going out, it was windy. And the first time out, you didn't notice it so much. Um, I don't know if that's because you're in a pack because you just started. Mm -hmm. um, but that the second out, I mean, we were like maybe three kilometers in and uh yeah, just couldn't couldn't probably had on. like um you know 45 mile an hour gusts wow that's incredible us. that's incredible <laughs> so yeah so, it, so it, it sounds to me like uh you've obviously like, both got the physical well i mean you you've done it already haven't you in, 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 yeah, in a and, past life in a past and, life and all our numbers because we've done lots of we've read lots of running books and uh, haven't we all and yeah. we've run yeah. we've read and discussed the marathon training methods of you know everybody and right. uh, all our numbers say that it's touch and go but it's about there yeah 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 i mean all, all i would say from 
challenges that I'd like I like to go through halfway a little bit faster than that, just because you just however much you don't want to, you just tend mm-hmm. to fade a bit. You just tend to yeah. fade a bit. 15 it's seconds. because in the past, like sometimes when I've gone through half too, um, mm. with too much despair, uh, mm. like I think because, you know, probably I'm just on the edge. So that just pushes you yeah, off yeah, the yeah, edge, yeah. you know, no, for the right. second it's, half. It's, it's a very fine line. It's a really fine line. Yeah. You try to go through half in under, uh, <coughs> under 90 minutes, which is a fast half marathon to start with but you want a bit of time to play with. But if you go through too fast, then you're just too tired. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's, it's, tricky. it's tricky. It's really, but three hours five is a great time for a marathon and in wind, windy conditions. You want to find somewhere where it's, where it's not so windy. Where's this one in October? Is it the same marathon? No, it's going to be right. the same city where we're doing the Toronto waterfront marathon. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's but it's a... And it's fast. Yeah. Cool. Yes. But waterfront sounds slightly ominous in terms of wind though doesn't mm, it the wind off the water yeah me. the last time we did it it was uh, it was good um okay, cool, so good, you good. know let's um well, I fingers know. crossed we'll i think i think you're gonna do it i think you're gonna <laughs> i mean you're obviously training how many miles you do a week do you have a basic mileage that you do yeah we haven't started our program this year for, okay, for the marathon right. but well, last right. year we were doing what was it we like peaked at 140 k yeah that so was only we, one week we though we were doing we were doing well, 110, like, 120K. Yeah, so that's so, about, what, 60, 70 miles? Um, 60 yeah. times 1.6. And then, and then <laughs> it's about 70 miles, about 70 miles a week. Yeah, sounds about, 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 sounds 60, about, about right. 16, about 16 kilometers a day. Sounds yeah, there right. were a lot. We, we chose a plan uh, from one of the books we had read, which was okay. Advanced Marathoning. That's a great yes. Yeah, that's yeah. A great yeah and uh, so we chose sort of like there was a, like a plan kind of in the middle. So that's the one we chose because we thought, okay. okay, the mileage is um, what we doable. do is we get we get free marathon training consultancies. So we get Fitzing yeah. Pete Fitzinger on to come and talk of about his book, yeah. and then we say, what should we do, Pete? Of course, yeah, of course, it's amazing. You know, and Hal Higdon, and it's great to get all these people on. Yeah. But it, it's also the longer you run, the more you, you the more you learn your strengths, isn't it? I mean, for mm-hmm. me. For me, the key sessions, I think, in terms of in terms of beating three hours, I got my, my legs got used to high mileage. I never did as much high mileage as that. My highest miles was like 55 miles, which is n- not much, 80, 90 kilometers, and that was rare. But was the um, it was the the threshold runs. It was mm-hmm. the sort of, it was the runs at about um, 620, 630 mile pace, which would be about sort of four, four, five between yeah. four five mm-hmm. four, ten, yep. and yeah yeah those are the ones that i i usually am n- like least successful yeah 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 they're, well they're really hard they're really hard to do they're, but it's yeah. just i think they're the they're the most that, that that and the long runs of course long runs are great because they're just mm-hmm. great long runs is the re- long runs is your sunday lunch isn't it it's just like it's, it's your nutrition as a marathon run the long runs is essential but the threshold runs and that's when you need company isn't it that's when you need people with you that's when you mm-hmm. need to you that's what to, that's what clubs are good for because absolutely, well yeah, absolutely you have your club long run so you got all your club mates yeah and that but then but then the threshold runs as well you get with you get with your club mates on a tuesday night and they go out for like 10 kilometers at a fast pace and you just try and stay with them as long as possible those sessions are that they're, they're awful and really hard mm-hmm. work. yeah they are <laughs> but, but, but they're really valuable i mean any i mean we can all do like you know 600 meter reps or whatever they're good fun aren't they do you know i mean i love you know i love doing all that stuff but it, it's the stuff you don't like that you need to do <laughs> that with people do with people yeah get in get in and do your threshold runs yeah, so it's, when- it's exactly that um we were saying on the last podcast i think there is there are some things that each of us don't like doing mm. but we're gonna have to do it because you've got to do something a little bit different and a little bit more to get a result that's a little bit different and a little bit better yeah totally of course it's just that sort of just little, just little changes, you know. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're coming at it from different uh, ends of the age spectrum as well, aren't you? I mean, I mean, you know, we've got sixty-three and forty-one. Listen, you don't look like you're sixty-three. You're forty. No, I'm you're not sixty-three. No, no, you're not forty. I'm you're not forty. Not... Thirty-six, thirty-five. You're thirty-five. No, no, I, I am, <laughs> I am forty-one. <laughs> you're very healthy for it. Um, and and 
but not too many gray hairs yet like only a couple like like over here you're looking you're you're a great testament to the running lifestyle and um but but it's sort of but for 63 i mean that's pretty tricky as well isn't it i mean i know some guys i know i know one guy's in my club who's 60 who's you know running like you know late 240s for a marathon but not many it's quite you've you've obviously you've obviously got a a, a body that suits running haven't you yeah in terms of injuries and stuff you're quite lucky that you can do that mileage at your age and and not feel it i don't know whether my body could could handle it already you know because yeah and uh, you know i'm a bit like uh i don't know ladies when they get into their late 30s you know i can feel my biological clock ticking Mm, mm. okay time's (laughs) running out it's obviously ticking slowly though i mean you know the fact that you can do like three five marathons it's it's amazing you you mentioned the the morton's toe i can't believe you ran through that i mean everything i read online was really enough to scare me away from doing that because i was like i don't want surgery i don't want this to be chronic i mean it was not it was it was a like pretty awful feeling that morton's neuroma it feels like it was something I was unaware that I even had. And then I noticed as I increased my mileage, as I got closer to the marathon, things started sort of going wrong in my sort of lower leg, foot pain, bits and bobs. And then mm. I went to a specialist and they told me I had Morton's toe. And it's it, it, for the marathon itself, it didn't particularly affect me that much. Of it. I think I was just lucky. I didn't take any time off. I just rubbed a bit of oil into my foot and did some massages and just tried. I just, it was just too late then in the process. But I've since had, had problems with it. And I just, hmm. I wear toe blockers. I do certain exercises. But you're right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get half my toe off. You know what I mean? I'm not prepared to do that. Um, some people do, but I'm, I'm just not prepared to do that. But I think it's something that means that you've got to work within your own parameters. And I, I, I think anything above 50 miles a week for me, which is like 85, 90 kilometers, is I start to get a few niggly niggly little injuries you know as you get older i need to stretch more which is really boring but i'm doing it a bit more <laughs> do you know what i mean i'm got i hate stretching but i'm starting to do it more little strengthening exercises this you just have to do it don't you you know I've, I've, I've never i never had to do it when i was a kid but you, you have to you have to adapt that's what the next book's going to be about actually just sort of um letting go of a previous version of yourself to embrace the next the next phase of it um you know so there is going to be a next book well it, it's been commissioned uh so oh, fantastic <laughs> i've got uh, i've got the advance burning a hole in my pocket um and i've uh I, so I, i'm gonna make a leap into it's it's almost a formula isn't it is to run a bit longer so i'm i'm running i'm i'm, I'm dipping a i'm dipping my morton's toe into ultras this oh, summer okay. um and then there's the hope to do the marathon de sable next year mm. um so yeah, so and part of that is because I don't think I can run any faster at, at the marathon. I just don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do the training. I really enjoy running. Um, I love running slow. Um, I'm 50, <laughs> I'm 52, and I'm sort of I'm just I'm sort of it's that sort of embrace just let, letting go of the past and embracing a new a new reality. Um, the, the, the the marathon the 26.2 miles to happiness. It was a sort of it's a very goal directed book, obviously. Um, it's about being a certain time and the process of that. And the next book's going to be a little bit more about enjoying the experience and and, and the adventure of it and the ex- sort of exploration of of that. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm I'm running again. I had I struggled a little bit during lockdown um, for various reasons, but I also had a sort of um, a period of just getting injured all the time. I just I was getting I had calf problems and then I had, I had then I had groin problems and then I had lower back. And I found, and for some reason, my body's just cleared up the last few months and I can just, I'm back running again. And it's just, it's just amazing. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, just it's amazing. so frustrating though, when that happens, right? It's, it's awful, like it's, some, it, it just seems to be back to back injuries and all of a sudden it's like, oh, cured. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I think part of it was, was weight. I put a bit of weight on during lockdown and, and, and that didn't help. And that led to sort of a bit of lower back stuff. And, and I haven't, it's not like I've been denying myself food or anything, but just, I've just been running more and just losing a bit of weight. And it just, I feel my, my biomechanics coming back. Yeah, no, you're right. It is biomechanics. It's the way I'm running is changing. And, and that's a really nice, I'm at a really nice period. So, so I'm sort of, I'm letting go of my old PBs. I'm now having, I'm now in a new, I'm, I'm in a new era. I'm in the post COVID era. The P- PCE post COVID era. <laughs> I'm, so I'm getting PBs for this era now. I'm getting. I'm on a new trajectory. I'm getting faster. Oh, that's fantastic. Every week. 
And that's how I'm, that's how I'm looking at it. I've, I've let it, so it's gone. We've all got to let stuff go, haven't yeah. we, about what's happened in the last couple of there's, years. There's certainly nothing worse than being a runner when you can't run. Yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, a it's, horrible uh, experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've realised how um, how valuable running is to me the last couple of years, just the simple act of just being able to run. I mean, obviously, we're coming out of this thing and lockdown and stuff, you know, and it's just, it was just, we were always encouraged to run um, in the UK, even if it was just for an hour, just to get out and run. And lots of people started running. Mm -hmm. And a lot more, I've noticed at the events, there seems to be more people now. And that's amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. It's it's, it's amazing. We've got an event... Um, we've got these park run events on a on a Saturday morning that are just yeah, time to by somebody run. about that a few weeks ago. Yeah, and that, yeah, wrote wrote a book about it, and it's um it's a really nice event, and just more and more people have, have been going since lockdown ended, and of all types, and you could see it happening during lockdown. You could see you could see some people who were just running because they were they were scared of getting COVID and wanted to get as fit as possible, and you see some people just running because they needed to do something and. And some just didn't have, didn't have any of the gear, and they just they just started running, and they were so natural. These natural running, it was just so nice mm. to see all different types of people getting into the simplicity of running because it's such a simple thing, isn't it? You can, sort of the you British the version of Kenya, you know, the just the yeah. Kenyans are just natural runners, and here the Brits yeah. are natural runners as well. They just never had the opportunity <laughs> in them yeah, to said, do like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, uh, yeah, it was it, it was lovely. Some people. Everyone runs differently. I love the way that everyone's got their own style. You know, I just love it. It's like a signature, isn't it? Just the way people run. Yeah, it's like you can see your your clubmate from, I don't know, down the street and you can't see their face. But yeah, yeah, sometimes but you, you can tell. Yeah, sometimes you can tell who it is. You recognize the way they run. And I think I think sometimes we overthink that. Uh, and I think it's just, yeah, there's, there's something I still find. You know, sometimes I volunteer at events and I... Uh, and I, you know, and I help people through and stuff. And I, I just love the way people run in, in a different way, you know, and they're, you know, all the way down the field. I really get off on it, you know. It's just, uh, it's fab. So yeah, I really, I really valued, I really valued it during during lockdown. And it's nice to feel, with the podcast, we do the podcast running commentary. It's nice to feel that you're part, as you are as well, as part of something that's encouraging people to run because it's mm-hmm. yeah. such a simple, nice, good thing to do. You know, maybe you should just take a moment and tell our listeners about your podcast running commentary yeah it's running commentary it's uh it's me and a, another comedian called rob daring and we used to meet up and go for runs together as a lot of people do and we'd chat and we'd notice that the further we ran the better the chats got because you relax and then your mind goes and then you talk about all kinds yeah. of things and then we thought um i i actually had the idea why not just tape this and because because it was a time when everyone was doing a lot of people starting podcasts so we thought we'd, we'd just do, do this as a podcast, and um, and it's very very simple. We just we rec- we go for a run and we record it. Um, so every run's a little bit different, and things happen during the run. Sometimes we talk about running. Sometimes we talk about life. Sometimes it's really silly. Sometimes it's really serious. Sometimes we interview people, but not as often as we should do because it takes too much effort. So we <laughs> you know, we can be a bit lazy in that respect. But we've had some great people. I guess you you also need to have somebody that's um, able to run and chat at the same time. Yeah, 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 totally. But it has to be said, we run very slowly. I mean, we run okay. at like sort of nine, 10 minute mile pace. We run very, it's very conversation. And, you know, we get a lot of, a lot of people uh, seem to be listening. Uh, people listen in the bath. They listen when they're in the car. They listen walking the dog. Some people listen to it when they're running and they feel like we're running with them, you know, so yeah and and the people who like the podcast really like the podcast which is a great thing you know because it's a very intimate and we're very honest about it I, I i i sort of forget that it's being recorded really i mean i'm just i meet rob up he takes care of all the technical stuff we put the mics on we we run around the park i t- completely forget it's being recorded <laughs> then we send it to some guy in portugal who edits it a little bit very little and then puts it out it's very it, it's very lo-fi and very simple, but uh, just just a nice little a nice little offering. And we, we try and celebrate people's running. So we celebrate their PBs. People send us in their PBs of all standards, and we celebrate them. And that's the great thing about it, isn't it? The you know the relative levels of running. To some people, I'm fast. I go to my club. I'm one of the slowest. I go here. I'm fast. On you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? It's just mm-hmm. that's what running gives you. You know, you can you yeah. can that, that, that individual experience that we're all going through when we run. You know? 
So um, actually, it kind of brings me because it seems like, you know, that your running podcast seems to be kind of a way that you give back to the community. Um, mm. So and the book is a little bit that, too, because uh, at the beginning of the book, you mentioned how you hope that it gets at least one person maybe running. Mm. Yes. Um that would be amazing. What are other things that you want us to get out of it? What about us that already run? Well, I suppose, I suppose if you already run, I suppose a, a couple of a couple of tips, a couple of training, just training tips in there. There's a bit of training, there's a bit of training tips. And just maybe a bit of that thing about uh, just the psychology, a, li- a few a few laughs, of course. There's, there's, some, mm-hmm. there's some chapters those, that are There's just, definitely those. Just good, just <laughs> pure, pure, purely comedic because I know I've been a little bit, I, I can get a little bit serious, but just to sort of, you know, just to get a way of honouring and enjoying your own personal run, runner's journey and just sort of, and that thing that races can give you and embracing the race and the psychology of races. And and the, uh, I talk a, a bit, we, 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 we skirted around it before about the mantra, about finding mm-hmm. a mantra to help you through the marathon. Yeah. And you mentioned it, certain phrases key into and help you. And I think that's a big thing about about a marathon as well. Finding your own mantra that you can repeat that helps to um, helps you get through it. And just that process can be quite revealing as well. And just that thing of honouring running as a way of exploring yourself in your own psychology and just to sort of just 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 what it can give you as a, as an entire person, not just as a fit person, but what it, what it can give you mentally as well. I notice when I'm running. Obviously, some of this, some of this is physical, but I'm also just calmer. I'm just, I'm mm-hmm. just better. Like I went for a run early today, and we did. I did about 10, 10 miles, or whatever, and I've just felt better all all day because of it, you know. And if I can't run for three or four days, I just don't feel as as great as a human. But I just don't feel like I'm operating well. Probably as a human Roz, being. Roz kicking you out the door by that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want just, <laughs> yeah, it's just like. I'm just a bit, a bit sort of grouchy, or there's some, you just feel like a better animal, don't you? Don't you when I go for a run? So it's sort of definitely sort of it's sort of writing about that really as well, and just sort of and everyone's got their own story about running, and it's sort of I suppose helping people think about it and just 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 respect what they're going through and enjoy enjoy races, enjoy the mm-hmm. whole thing. Actually, the one, uh, well, there were a few things, but one thing that I kind of liked that you said in the book about the mantra, just because we were on that topic was, mm-hmm. um, and I guess this was one of the nuggets uh, that the, that I kind of took away from the book was uh, that your mantra like will probably change. Um, and I find that to be true because, you know, my very first marathon, um, I had a phrase that I was just repeating in my head and then I've tried to use it in other marathons and it didn't have the same value. Um, and, and so, and now I'm not really, you know, last marathon, I don't even think I was able to come up with a mantra that was really useful during the marathon. So even like you saying that it's a process and, but the, the, the problem is also, or I guess, I don't know if it's really a problem because I guess we all change um, you know, throughout our lives. So it's normal that we change in our running as well, but I find that, that, you know, now I have to find a new mantra. So absolutely because, because because you're different because you, and and you, you've run your three, five and you've had that and you're now, you're now a little bit different. And and just like we're saying how your training's got to change a little bit. It's that sort of, uh, it's a phrase that I heard in, uh, house of cards, actually, one of the characters said, um, to improve is to change, to perfect is to change constantly. It's like you're constantly changing and tweaking things, and you you know your your mantra's got to change as you change to be relevant. It just has to be fresh. All it has mm. to do is connect. All it has to do is give you a little charge. So when you say those three words or whatever it is, you feel a little bit. There's a little shiver goes up your goes up your spine, you know, and that's ve- that's different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, and it, and it, and it has to change. If you're carrying like old old mantras, it's like it's, de- it's over. It's dead wood. It doesn't make any sense anymore. You know. <laughs> It's got to fire your, your brain, your synapses, you know. Um, but it's exciting, though, isn't it? It's exciting that you've run a three, five marathon, and you want to beat you want to beat three, and you feel it's very, very exciting. Yeah, and you, I suppose you're just in a pre. What you should be doing is trying to get faster over the summer, isn't it? That's what I always mm-hmm. say. To people. If they're going for an autumn marathon, I would say um, I'd say do some track if you can do some track races like June, July, and just get fast get faster over five k or three k, and just hit that a little bit you know and then 
So then your marathon pace feels easier, you know, just enjoy that summer. That's what I'd say. Yeah, I did try. I tried to do that over the winter. Um, I did some indoor track races. So did like you really? 1500. Wow. Yeah. And then I did a 5k. Um, yeah. But then I got COVID and, um, and oh. I lost like four weeks of training. <laughs> So okay. I was, I was really fast for a little and, while. And how, <laughs> and how have you recovered after COVID? If you don't mind me asking, have you, you seen, you seen, um, been, yeah, it's, safe? it's been it, it, like, uh, I'm okay. I'm pretty okay five, now. Yeah. I did at the weekend. Yeah. Because I did a fast 5k, um, in March before I got right. COVID and I was, it was 1859. And, uh, yeah, I did, yeah. I ended up sort of like being on the couch for two weeks. And then I, uh, even like the first easy run back was just like it, I had to walk a few times and I did oh, like 5k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I felt like I was really far from what I had mm. been, but it mm. just seems like, um, it's a bit like, uh, you know, an old car, you just kick it in the carburetor and, and it starts working again. <laughs> I, I feel a little bit like that. It feels like every workout I do, uh, you know, I did a few, a few easy runs and then I did an easy, some easy runs with strides. And it just seemed mm -hmm. like the first one would just feel like, Oh, I don't think I can do this. And then if I went two days later, it felt like, Oh, okay. Like this feels more like it used to feel. So mm -hmm. it's a bit yeah. strange. Um, it's coming back pretty quickly, but basically I did one track workout. And based on that, I, I was a bit scared that this 5k, but I was already registered. So I, I figured oh, I'm just going to show up, but I was expecting like maybe 21 minutes. Cause I didn't think that I had anything in me to mm. run a fast 5k and I ended up running like 1905 so I was only six mm. seconds off mm. of my oh, that's amazing that's amazing my that's great pretty, yeah that's so great. I'm, I'm pretty, you're pretty back. happy you're back. yeah, yeah you're I'm pretty back. happy about that I'm pretty happy yeah, about that, that. That's amazing. I don't that's have amazing. the I don't think I have any I don't think I have the endurance really back like if I were to go run yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. some of the long runs feel like an effort but hey maybe it's just because I need the kick in the carburetor and that it's gonna be fine after <laughs> You've got to grade it. I mean, you've got to, you know, you've got to take it a little bit gradually. It's a shock, isn't it? COVID was a shock to everyone mentally and physically, and you've had it physically, and you've been through that. And it's just listening to your body and just, you know, you've got your pace back. That's great for 5K. And just yeah, just and I, it, I was kind of lucky. It didn't, um, didn't affect my lungs, I don't think. It's just Brilliant. that it, uh, it's just it feels like, you know, I had no muscles when I came back to running. Yes, just weaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just weaker. <laughs> It's, you can you can lose it, but it's amazing how quickly it comes back. But you can lose your fitness pretty sharp. One of our game plans this year is also not to peak too soon because yeah. what we did was we we put loads of miles into the winter last year, mm -hmm. so that when we started our training program, because we were starting the advanced marathoning, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to be prepared program, for the plan. We wanted to be ready for the mileage mm -hmm. it was going to throw at us. But in fact, mm. we tied ourselves out a little bit, I think, and yeah, yeah, we yeah, probably yeah. ended up being underdone by the end. Yeah, that's. I think. I think it's uh, psychologically and physically much better to be. It, again, it's very. It's a very fine. It's tight margins everywhere, isn't it? You're looking for tight margins everywhere. She, she, you know, we'll, we'll we'll chat about shoes shoes in a minute. But um, but, but you want to be uh, under. You want to be if. if if it's a choice between under trained or over trained, you'd want to be slightly under trained because mm -hmm. once you're over training, it's that dead leg sensation, isn't it? And you just feel I've just overcooked yeah. this a little. Oh bit. yeah, I've done that. <laughs> it yeah. was it was a terrible feeling. Yeah, we've all done that. Where, mm -hmm. what, what's happening with the shoes? Because I haven't I haven't done any races with the new shoes with these with the zooms. How are you feeling about that? Did you do last October? Were you in zooms? Zoom, yes. Yes. Right. The, yeah. The Nikes. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Alan ha was using the Saucony, the Endorphin Pro. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, I it's using the same thing. Super the... shoes. I'm a sort of. Yeah. I'm a Nike denial person. Right. Okay. Cool. So you wear you wear super shoes, and then Alan doesn't. Uh, well, we both wear super shoes, but different brands. I wear Saucony's <laughs> Saucony's version. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And did, did you? Uh, I must say, I I've never I've 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 never run in them yet. Um, I, I, and I sort of. I'd quite like to get sort of at the moment it would feel completely unjustifiable because I'm just nowhere near fast. But if I start to get some pace back, I will undoubtedly mm -hmm. be doing be doing this because they obviously work. They obviously so, work. yes, mm -hmm. and actually the one thing that's that's really um, striking about the super shoes that I found was because the first time I wore them was in 2019, mm -hmm. and after the marathon, it was like. 
you know, I remember how marathons used to feel you'd finish a marathon and just everything aches, like your mm-hmm. hips ache and your joints ache and everything is kind of achy. Yeah. So it's not that um, I didn't finish the marathon fresh, but I f- finished it with less of that achy feeling. It was as if my, my, I don't know, like it was as if there was less pounding that happened. So for sure, in terms of like, could I have gone faster? Um, like I had run a good time mm. and no, I couldn't have gone faster. Like I, I had run a personal best at the time. So I did go really? faster really? than my Fantastic. previous per- personal best, but yeah. It was what was really striking is that is the the feeling after it was less um, destroyed and and you know the days after you uh, you're like walking down the stairs and mm, you don't know mm. if you should go forward or backward because like your quads are just all yeah, yeah, ripped yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so I still had that but it it was not like usually uh, you know I would be walking down the stairs with lots of difficulty for I don't know four or five days after the mm, marathon mm, and mm. that time it was less intense and maybe I don't know three days I you know it was incredible. It, incredible. so yeah. it's as if like those shoes the I, I guess they're it's the magic. foam yeah magic. they're they're magic like magic shoes. not did I... only do they make you run faster um, and maybe part of that's psychological too, because yeah. you know, when coming from a track background, you always had your spikes on race day. Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah, it was a bit yeah. like uh, well, Kara Goucher's book, um, Strong, calls it enclosed cognition. It's just like you know, on race day, you absolutely. also wear have your race routine and your race kit. So you've got like your club singlet and you've got your special shoes for yeah, race totally. day. So that's oh, it's. You, you I dress, think part of it is to a achieve bit, basically. Uh, it's, sort yeah. of, it's ritualistic, isn't it? But when I used to run a lot in the sort of, you know, as my first sort of manifestation as a runner, it was all about the lightness of the shoes. It was all about no, no mm-hmm. sewing, really, no cushioning, mm-hmm. just yeah. a real light road race, race trainer. Mm-hmm. And now the, the cushioning, you know, I, I've heard you t- tell me whether it's true that it sort of forces you forward a little bit into like more of a natural four foot strike. Did you it, find that? And, and for, for yeah. that reason, people's quads hurt more other parts of the body didn't but they but they, it affected the body in a different way because they're forced yeah, forward yeah. Onto their foot. yeah i mean i'm a, I'm a super big fan of the sort of nearly super shoes that that soccer you do um endorphin speeds which have okay. a, a nylon plate because i'm an advocate of the midsole material right. rather than the plate so right, okay. the midsole material that they use has a rebound which gives you more energy back Right, and the plates really just to stop the midsole material from from falling over because they're stacking so much under your foot. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. It's, it's interesting you mentioned the term bounce back because I did a thing in the podcast recently. We we're chatting to uh, uh, Shane Benzie, who wrote the Lost Art of Running. Yeah, we've got um, his book. Yeah, and he talks about there. Uh, he talks about you know running and, and and he talks about seeing the ground as a source of energy as opposed to a draining thing. So when yeah. you're running, you get, you're getting energy from the ground and that's sort of, he talks about that sort of bounce back thing, but he tries to do that through, through, through how you actually run. And it's quite mm-hmm. exhausting when, when you do it, but I've, I've kept, kept it as a little just message to myself at the end of, of races or whatever, just try to get energy from the ground as opposed to just sort of smashing into it, you know, mm-hmm. um, it must be, it must be a great and different feeling to have those to, to where there's magic trainers, you know, it must be good fun. But keep it them, is it keep is just for races you know because it is uh, yeah I, thing you know there is yeah and i do like the ones that i wear for the race i mean right now they're in a box like yeah, uh, they don't really. i don't i don't train in them um you don't, don't even don't even look at them you're not even looking you're not nope. ready for them. yeah you know? nope, <laughs> nope. They, they're in a box i don't look at them they're not tempting me they're not in my regular shoe rack open the box occasionally just smell smell them for a second and then put them back <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but i i think regardless of your pace i, I think people can benefit from them more yeah, because of fun. the yeah i mean it it just you know makes you feel faster and basically mm. that's the that's the idea right you just want to be faster than whatever you are every, every everyone i know who wears them runs faster i mean it's a mm-hmm. yeah. no-brainer you know yeah. and but they're I, super light i mean it's really surprising and they're they're, they're sports cars i mean they're, they're they perform at high speeds mm-hmm. you know they're designed mm-hmm. to work well when you're going quicker of course of course it, it took me a while to realize this because i'm so daft but um 
it, it means that the elites are going to get faster, not only because they're wearing fast trainers on race day, but obviously they're rich enough to wear them tra tra training. <laughs> Sounds like a simple point. Thanks. But but as normal people can only wear them at races because you run out and they're expensive anyway and they've only yeah. got so many miles in them. Yeah. But when you're an elite athlete, you just you wear them all the time. So it's changing your style all the time and getting faster. And people are that's, just going to get faster and that's faster. That's where those mm -hmm. Sokanis I mentioned are good because they don't cost as much, but you get a lot, right, I think okay. you get a lot of the benefit. Okay, cool. And, mm -hmm. and the the data on them now says that they last a long time. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I'll have a little look. I'll have a little look at those. Which we've kind yeah. of noticed. If anybody just... from Saucony is listening, um, we're not uh, currently sponsored by you, but we've just endorsed <laughs> your product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, we should we should wind up here. It's past your bedtime, or it should okay. be past your bedtime, even if it's not. Um, it's been a pleasure. It's been really nice to talk to maybe you. Maybe we could uh, ask you the final questions we normally ask people, which is... Um, you know, if people are looking to buy a copy of your book, is, is there any way you'd like to direct them? It's well, it's it's released by Bloomsbury, so it's on their it's on their website. If they don't want to go to the massive yeah. deliverer of all books to everywhere around the world, <laughs> uh, the huge monolith, it's obviously yeah. available on that. Yes. Um, but if but if you want to circumnavigate that, then go to bloomsbury.com, um, and you okay. can get it there. Yeah, twenty six point two miles to happiness. Yeah, and if people want to follow you. And see what you're up to uh, at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I am on Twitter. Um, it's just uh, let, let, let me have a look. I'm 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 rubbish on all this. You, you didn't sound um, very sure that you were on Twitter when you. No, said no, no, I, no. I'm I, I'm I'm on Twitter, but I do, I don't go on it very often. I'm I'm just P Paul Tonkinson um, on Twitter. Um, that that's what I'm. So and and I do a lot of chatting to people about running and football it has to be said as well <laughs> not a football chat um that that's a, that's a good one and if you want to have a look at the uh, podcast running commentary as well or everyone welcome yeah. free free at point of access and uh and, and and good fun just join just join us on our runs it's good i guess uh do you want to mention that maybe in the future your son's going to set you up the youtube channel or not ready for the well i mean at some point he, at some point that's his department he said that so at some point i'll okay. be on YouTube. i am on youtube at some point i will have my own channel but you know okay uh, stay tuned yeah stay tuned and i've just joined be real have you seen have you heard about be real no be real is a um it's a it's a sort of antidote to that kind of instagram sort of filtered my life's perfect it's just called be real and then you get a you get a notification and you just have to do a photo of where you are and what you're doing at that particular moment and everyone that, that, i think that's good because it's completely in the opposite direction of everything it's just like saying i'm just being real so everything is just really normal so like no 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 filters it's no just filter. you know so you're, in oh, the right you're in the toilet and, and you get a notification you take yeah yeah of course yourself. yeah absolutely yeah so that's quite nice I'm, I'm so i'm on that but uh as i try and do, to be fair i try and do uh less social media rather than more i prefer i prefer to be out running hmm. or reading a book but i i am on i am on what we usually do at the end is we usually just give our summary thoughts, uh, Liz and I, like uh, 30 seconds. You can stay and hear what we're going to say about you. Um, if you wish, we prefer that, but I'm just conscious of the time. No, no, I can, I, I can, I can stay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Should we do that, Liz? Mm -hmm. Does that mean I'm going first? No, I'll go first. Okay. You've got more <laughs> stuff. I can see it, your stuff written here. <laughs> That's true. Mine will be more than 30 seconds. So, so just in okay. summary, uh, my thoughts on the book the books are fun and easy read paul's style is humorous as you might expect and the chapters are also short which makes for a page turner so it's a quick wonderful read excitement uh humor thrills and spills the book flips between training paul's background so his story and the london marathon itself uh, and building excitement as it progresses so you go through the the race all the way through the book from sort of start to finish and Boy, it, it ramps up. So it's it's fun from that point of view. The book is both entertaining and at the same time gives some good insights to marathon preparation and racing. So there are things I think Paul referenced, uh, there's tips to be taken, and uh, I agree. There are a few pages of color in the middle, color photos showing Paul's childhood and his entertainment career and running exploits, which is always fun. I like to see, you know, I'm a bit of a visual, so I like to see the photos and the, the reality of uh, of the story as it rolls out. So all in all, highly entertaining, motivating, and well worth a read. I guess along the same lines, um, 
the, the you know the book is full of funny interactions between Paul as a runner and some of his uh, non-running friends. Uh, so so those are quite funny. There are also some classic stories about um, runners always wanting to run no matter what is hurting and other quirky things that runners do. Uh, the book is a testament to how people can change. Paul changes his lifestyle to make sure he will live long enough to see his kids grow up because that's one of his motivations to return to running. He changes uh, certain habits and mindset in order to achieve his sub three hour goal. And uh, I was particularly inspired by how Paul reacted when their first baby was on its way and he decided to go to therapy to make sure he doesn't repeat the cycle of abuse with his own family. So I like the competitive dynamic with his club mates and the banter about not being a sub three hour marathoner. If you ran three hours and three seconds or three hours and 24 seconds, <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, I think uh, this could be a, a good taper week read because the description of the marathon and Paul's thoughts can be a good reminder of what we're about to face and maybe prompt us to be mentally prepared for the challenge. Uh, although there are a lot of funny stories, the book could be triggering to some people who have been victims of family violence. So I just thought I would, you know, put that out there um, because uh, it's it's, like a it doesn't go warning. exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> it's always good to mention. I mean, it's not it's not the bulk of the book, but there, you know, there are some stories of um, of his uh, of his youth and experience. Overall, love the book. It was uh, it was like uh, Alan said, a page turner. So just one last. Big thank you to you, Paul. Before we do our outro, yeah, thank you very much. In terms of um, in terms of the uh, the childhood stuff, it's uh, I, I I wanted to write. I of course could have written a lot more <laughs> about that, but I just wanted to. A lot of it was about being honest, but also uh, to share it. A big part of the motivation was to give a hope to some people who might be going through similar experiences or have had gone through similar experiences to that they could uh, emerge from them. And I've had some nice messages from people who have or who are dealing with those kind of things and have felt uh, that, that, that it really helps them. And, and just getting those sort of makes it all worthwhile, really, just to, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Just, yeah. just to, that, that, that it had meaning for people like that. So I need to, it was a fine line to get because I wanted it to be honest enough so that people will realise that it, that it was real and that it all happened, but I didn't want to overdo it because obviously you don't want to disturb people, but I wanted it to be honest enough so that people going through it uh, recognized that I was telling the truth and I knew what mm -hmm. I was on about. So it's sort of, you know, it was a very, it was a, it was a very delicate area. And also, you, as I say, you're dealing with family members, people are still alive and you, do, you don't want to upset people, but uh, it was an honest part of my journey. So therefore, I wrote about it. You know, mm -hmm. And for me, uh, for me, I think you got the balance right. Okay, you know, good. it's, it's positive, it's uplifting, it's real. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, you tell it like it is. But at the same time, um, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, doesn't define your whole life. Yeah, yeah, I tell it um, like it was. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true, right? Eh? Yeah, like it was. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, it's great to it's great to move on, and that's a, that's a great thing about life, isn't it? We can, you know, we can change, we can be the change, we can affect change. Mm. You know, that's. Um... I look forward to seeing your uh, your next your next book where you take on maybe the ultra running uh, challenge and. Uh... Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, you'll come and back and talk to us about that. Of course, I will. Of course mm. I will. and good luck with your your attempt to beat sub three. Cheers. Hopefully, next time you talk to us, we'll be sub three hour marathoners. No, it will. There's no hopefully about it. That's going to happen. I'm with you. It's going to happen. Luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of Running Book Reviews. A big thank you to the publisher Bloomsbury for providing a review copy of the book. And a big thanks to Paul for spending uh, some of his valuable time with us today. If you'd like to leave us feedback about how we can improve the podcast or you want to suggest a book that you'd like us to review in a future episode, please leave us a comment on social media. We are Running Book Reviews on Facebook and Instagram. And on Twitter, we are reviews underscore running. Please also follow us on social media to find out about new episodes when they're released. Or you can just, just subscribe to us on your favorite streaming platform. Before I go, we've forgotten to mention Buy Me A Coffee. Um, if you'd like to buy us a coffee, you can go to the Buy Me A Coffee uh, uh, webpage. Just look up Running Book Reviews and buy Alan and Liz a coffee. Um, we're always up for drinking coffee, that's for sure. And we appreciate your support. That's all from us. Bye. 
you want to say bye? Bye for now. No, that's pathetic. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to um, leave that in. <laughs> no, you can't leave that in. Okay, bye for now.